Emotion begins to re-enter art in this image of the penitent Mary Magdalene by an unknown artist. This trend toward emotion, action and heroism, which began roughly after the death of Raphael in 1520, was called mannerism. Artists like Jacopo Pontormo searched for something beyond the harmony and balance of Raphael. In his Madonna and Child of 1521, you can see his departure from the humanistic values of Renaissance art. Faces are distorted, elongated to show emotion. Breaking from classicism, artists use their right as creators to manipulate objects and the human form for artistic effect. Seeking ever new avenues toward originality, balance was replaced with dissonance. The high renaissance in Rome had ended. The values of the High Renaissance evolved in a different way in the cosmopolitan city of Venice. There, Giorgione, a contemporary of Raphael, was the first of the Renaissance masters. In 1504, he painted the Jewish biblical heroine, Judith. A widow and great beauty, Judith saved her city by seducing and then beheading the general of the invading Assyrian army, Holofernes. She will carry his severed head back to her people. The heavy sword rests in her tiny hand. It's a painting that expresses the triumph of good over evil. The smooth tranquility and delicate shading are typical of the lyrical Giorgione, who portrayed in classical restraint this daring deed. Colors sparkle with a gem-like quality. Giorgione's landscapes are misty and dreamy. His Madonna and Child in a Landscape was painted in 1504 when he was 26. Giorgione's life was not long. He died at 32, but he left a great number of followers and imitators. Only five to seven paintings are recognized as his works. The Flight into Egypt is an early work by the Venetian painter Titian. It may have been done when he was a student in Giorgione's workshop. Both painters are famous as unsurpassed colorists. But unlike his teacher Giorgione, Titian had a long career, over 60 years. He was tremendously successful and prolific, influencing generations of European painters. On his canvases, the real world appears in almost unbelievable variety. Lorenzo Lotto's Portrait of a Married Couple is a painting filled with symbols relating to marriage. The wife holds a small dog, a symbol of marital devotion. The man points to a weasel, an animal who turns his female mate out of a lair. But he holds a note with a Latin inscription that translates, man never, presumably distinguishing man from beast. By the 16th century, sensuous nudes had become an accepted topic of art across Europe. The model for Portrait of a Woman, painted in about 1530, was one of Titian's favorites, perhaps even a lover. 
Usually the nude would be accompanied by some symbol indicating that she is a character from the Bible or a mythological goddess essentially giving a reason for the nudity. But in this case, the artist offers no excuses whatsoever. Like the ancient Greeks and Romans, he creates beauty for its own sake. She keeps on only her hat and jewelry and some provocative drapery awaiting the inevitable. The Penitent Mary Magdalene by Titian is one of the pearls of the Hermitage collection. Mary Magdalene kneels outside of her cave to which she has fled to renounce earthly pleasures in devotion to God. The expressive beauty of the painting emphasizes the deep grief of the penitent sinner. Her book rests on a skull, a reminder of mortality. Her attribute is a bottle of oil with which she anointed Christ's feet. The work is in the tradition of paintings of hermit saints. Even so, it depicts sensuous and earthly beauty, the love of textures and the play of light. Titian kept the painting in his home all his life. He liked it so well, he painted it three times. Once for himself, one for King Philip II of Spain, and one for a Venetian man. But this is the only version that survives to this day. Another Titian gem is the painting of the Greek myth of Danae. She was imprisoned in a tower by her father, the King of Argos. He had learned that her son would one day kill him. But Zeus appeared in a shower of gold and seduces her. It's a poetic vision of a distant world. As the aged artist's eyesight began to fail, his brushwork became loose and expressionistic. His palette darkened. Tormented, suffering figures were the new topic. Christ Bearing the Cross is the title of this work. His assistants began to report that Titian actually painted more with his fingers than with his brushes. He claimed to be impoverished and older than he actually was to tug at the heartstrings of his patrons. Because of this, no one really knows how old he was when he died in 1576. His Saint Sebastian dates from about 1570. Titian, the most famous of Venetian painters, had achieved such a mastery of color that he was now able to create works entirely with tones. Saint Sebastian, shot with arrows for his Christian faith, emerges as a model of spiritual strength, even at the moment of his death. In the final phase of the High Renaissance, artists returned to the first masters of the epoch for inspiration. The Milanese painter Cesare da Sesto owes much to the influence of Leonardo in his Holy Family with St. Catherine. Indeed, the work was once thought to be by Leonardo himself. Notice the smoky sfumato of the face. And like Leonardo's work, the painting includes an ugly old man, Joseph, as a contrast to the beauty of the women. But the colors are much brighter, more characteristic of the influence of Venetian painting, and Venice is not far from Milan. Jacopo Tintoretto was a Venetian painter famous for his many-figured compositions filled with passion and dramatic tension. This work represents the nativity of St. John the Baptist. A true son of the humanist age, 
Tintoretto paints a busy scene of the care of a newly born child in an ordinary family. We are transported to the environment of a 16th century Venetian home. To guide his painting, Tintoretto made models of his compositions, peopled with tiny wax figures, and lit the model from various angles to study the effect of light on the composition. The motto on the wall of his studio read, The Drawing of Michelangelo and the Color of Titian. Along with Veronese, Tintoretto was considered the most successful of the Venetian painters in the generation following Titian. This is Veronese's The Conversion of Saul. The Roman Saul was thrown down to the ground and blinded by a sudden light as he rode toward Damascus to obtain permission to arrest Christians. Saul, why do you persecute me, God asked. The voice was heard by all, throwing the group into chaos. It's a painting of movement, anxiety and asymmetry. Saul is about to be converted to the true faith, to become the Apostle Paul. Veronese is famous for his large pageant-like scenes, full of color. He was known as one of the greatest decorative artists, often painting sumptuous works that glorify the material beauty of life. In his religious works, he scrubbed his usual bright colors from his palette, using only the subdued tones of grief. Veronese painted his Lamentation in about 1578, 100 years after Leonardo painted Madonna with a flower. Christ's body recedes dramatically into the canvas to rest in the arms of the mourners. Brightly lit faces spring from deep shadows. Only the beautiful clothes of the angels remind us of the world's gaiety. Baronese almost sculpts the forms with light. It is a painting of a great colorist, even though the colors are not bright. The subtle variation of tones gives life to this work. The masters of the High Renaissance built on the discoveries of the early Renaissance to drive art to the limits of beauty. They were seen as supermen, possessed with the rare power of divine creation. And for all time, the status of the artist was changed. Seeking absolute truths about man and the universe, they reached new levels of harmony, balance, and technical virtuosity. Generations of artists have built on their achievements, adding new levels of expression, emotion, and drama.